If you'll remember, to several weeks ago, we had a total failure on the water pump situation. It was not situation. a total failure. It was a failure in every sense of the word. <laughs> the water part failed, the power part failed. Okay, but we learned. Oh yeah, so much. we figured it out, but I'm just saying, that's what gets us here. Good morning. Big project weekend over here. We are hopefully installing our shallow well pump, which is over there. We're gonna attach it to our big 2,600 gallon water tank. But to do that, we have to build an enclosure for it because eventually it's gonna get cold here. So we've completely over-engineered this massive tiny pump house. Massive tiny pump house, like that makes sense. Um, it's gonna fit the pump and we're gonna go dig some lines underneath, run some electrical to it. It's kind of gonna be a whole thing, like most of our things here. <laughs> we got the framing done. We're getting ready to put the walls and the insulation on. Uh, and then we gotta get it set in place. And then we can put the pump in and start running connections and stuff like that. So we'll show you what we're doing. Our first idea for the pump was actually to use a small 12 volt water pump. A little solar panel, a little battery, it would run by itself. And then we got cold feet. So we went the other direction and we bought like the biggest pump known to man. It's not. <laughs> it's like a one horsepower shallow well pump. We got it all hooked up. We had so much trouble with leaks, with leaks because of, it had a lot of, there were some threaded fittings and the water pressure was really, really high. And so it just, we plumbed and replumbed and we learned so much about plumbing and how you need to like give yourself an out when you're plumbing. Mm -hmm. um, so we learned a lot about that. But then after we finally figured that out, we had a huge power problem. And so what we didn't realize is that this pump said it ran at a certain amperage on 120 volt, but it had a startup amperage of like 10 times that, which they didn't list anywhere. So our inverter couldn't handle it. So then we thought, well, maybe we'll get a bigger inverter. Yeah, it would be easy. Just we'll just throw switch it, it up. You know, and like at this point, we've spent eight hundred dollars on an inverter and hundreds of dollars on plumbing fittings. Oh my gosh, so many plumbing. And things. we hook up the new inverter, and guess what happens? Ugh, it does not work. Doesn't work because our entire system wasn't wired for a three thousand watt inverter. We needed to have like much thicker wire to go on there but we were able to return it. So we decided to go back to our original plan. Yeah. Um, so we're happy to report that our gut feeling <laughs> was correct and that our original plan would have worked the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so basically, well, all we have is a tiny little 12 volt pump. It's like this big. So here's what we did. We actually bought the same pump that's that we've had in our RV for four Three years. And yeah, and it's been great, like super mm -hmm. solid and reliable. And so we're like, eh, we'll just get the same thing. So it's like a three and a half gallon per minute pump. Mm -hmm. We ditched all the PVC garbage and we just went with flexible hosing and hose barbs and pipe pumps. Yeah. yeah. And guess what? Those are real easy to put on and take off. So uh, that was much, much easier. We have some flexible hose. So we had a lot of just more flexibility in like how we were gonna hook it up. We spent Father's Day weekend connecting everything and it actually worked. The only other thing that we really wanted to do to kind of make it work even better was add a, an accumulator tank or a pressurized tank. And it was a really good thing that I built it so big. Yes, because it fits perfectly. <laughs> so we bought the biggest accumulator tank we could get. Yep. It's, it's a 36 gallon, so it dwarfs the pump. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so funny in there. Yeah, it's pretty fun. But it's cool because that means that we can pressurize. I don't think it pressurizes a full 36 gallons, but it pressurizes a lot of water. So that if we barely want to turn it on, we've got that pressure for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like we've got water probably five minutes before the pump even needs to kick on, yep. which is pretty cool. So that's all in there. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. We added hinges so that we can just lift the lid up instead of having to like take it off. And it was kind of a whole thing. We might add a switch. Um, that we can just turn the whole system on and off without having to actually get in there and do anything. I don't know. I haven't decided if we're going to bother with that yet. Oh, and we need to finish sealing it up because we already have two Black Widows in there. 
Yeah. And so many crickets. Yeah. Well, in the final phase of the project, so we have two T's in the system. We have one that goes to the pressure tank, uh, one that goes to the water hose spigot outside of the pump house. Mm -hmm. The third line will go underground. So we're going to have to drill a hole in the bottom of the pump house mm -hmm. and run a line underground about 100 feet near the airstream where it'll pop up and we'll connect the water hose there. Yeah, we really need to do that soon. Yeah, definitely. But we've been using water, pressurized water, for a couple of weeks. No leaks. You did really good. Thanks. I finally figured it out. It only cost us an enormous amount of time and money, but that's okay. Let's not talk about all those wasted fittings. Ooh, puppy alert. Puppy. Okay, quick pup date, because we know you all just care about the puppy. So. There he is! Yay! <laughs> Say hi! Now that we have water and it's not leaking, uh, we're moving on to another project. A couple of videos ago, we asked people what we should do next. Basically, we're doing a fence. Yes. That was what the majority of people thought, and that's really kind of what we thought too. Since fencing is going to be our next big project, we kind of need your help. We've already done a lot of research, but we would love to hear from you all if you know of any types of fencing we should be using that maybe we haven't heard of. Yeah. Uh, we've looked at a bunch, but we know there's a lot out there and we're just, we're always looking for help and for information. So let us know in the comments if you have any ideas for us and we'll see you next time. <laughs>